St. Paul, welcome to our century. Uh, would you mind telling a little bit about yourself? Certainly. I was a first century Jew. I was born in Tarsus and was given the name Saul. I was a Pharisee from the tribe of Benjamin. By trade, I was a leather worker. At one time in my life, I persecuted every Christian I could find. I had a, even had a hand in the death of Stephen, the first church martyr. I believe the Bible says you were to read threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord. Is that correct? That's absolutely true. I was very zealous for God's law, heavily grounded in Judaism, and I saw Christians as a threat to its existence. Of course, that was before my conversion in the presence of Christ. And at this conversion, you were formerly known as Saul, and your name changed to Paul, and that's when you began your ministry to the Lord. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And isn't it true that you founded churches in Asia Minor, and in Greece, and that any of your letters to churches are a part of the New Testament. Yes, I was considered a pioneer because I was the first to formulate and write down the doctrines of the gospel. I wanted to help God's people understand. Now, now what is it that you wanted them to understand? Well, I wanted to help people understand the grace of God and what God had done for them in Christ Jesus. I preached Christ and Him crucified. St. Paul, if you were to put the good news of Jesus Christ in just a few concise words, a short message, what would that message be? And in other words, just what has God done through Christ? Well, brevity was never one of my strong suits. <laughs> but I would say this. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But through the cross of Christ, we have forgiveness for our sin. And through his resurrection, we hope we have the hope of eternal life. All this is a gift from God. For by grace we have been saved from faith. Was the cross part of Christ's plan? Yes. The crucifixion of Christ was the fulfillment of Scripture. For it was written, he was reckoned with the transgressors. And again, he was wounded for our transgressions, and with his stripes we are healed. What other evidence do we have that the cross was indeed part of God's plan? Well, Jesus himself told his disciples on many occasions that the scriptures found their fulfillment in him, that he would suffer and die. It was God's plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in St. Paul, you testified, and I, I believe it's written here, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Are you saying that no one is perfect, including someone as devout as yourself? I was chief of all sinners, but while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. In fact, you had a difficult time, uh, you might say, doing good things yourself. Oh, yes. There were times when I didn't understand my own actions because I did not do the things that I wanted, but I did the very things that I hated. We know that nothing good dwells in us. Our minds will, our minds can will to do right, but we cannot do it. It's not a matter of willpower, it's our own human sinfulness. That sounds a lot like Judas Iscariot, doesn't it? I think it speaks for everybody. It's like another law at war within the law of my mind, and it makes me captive to the law of sin, which dwells in me. And of course, the wages of sin is death. Now that's a, that's a pretty wretched state. Who will rescue us from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, and the riches of His grace. Is grace of God strong enough, wide enough, and deep enough to extend even to a wretched man like Judas is scared? Yes. Nothing in this world can separate us from the love of God and Jesus Christ. Nothing. Now, Judas did a very bad thing. He betrayed Jesus. Surely there are some sins that would separate us from God's love. Don't you agree? No, I don't agree. God shows his love for us in that wild Christ died for us. 
have no more questions, Your Honor. Thank you, Paul. Ms. Justice, your witness. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Good evening, St. Paul. Are you familiar with the term universal salvation? Yes, I am familiar with it, although it wasn't a term in my day. Well, we know you've traveled from another century. What does universal salvation imply? Well, universal salvation is a belief that everyone is saved. Some people believe that when Christ died on the cross, he saved the whole world and everyone in it, regardless of whether or not they have faith. Do you believe in universal salvation, that everyone is saved? No. Why not? I believe that God desires everyone to be saved, but not everyone is saved. We are saved by grace through faith in Christ Jesus. In fact, you included the word faith, the word faith, 140 times in the letters attributed to you in the New Testament. Did Judas have faith in Jesus? I don't know. I never met Judas. I never knew him. Thank you. No more questions, Your Honor. Mr. Grace, you care to redirect? No, Your Honor. Very well. The witness may step down. Mr. Grace, I believe the defense has one last witness. Yes, Your Honor. I know the court has been very patient with me. Your Honor, Your Honor, I will interrupt. The prosecution adamantly objects, objects to this testimony from this next witness. I respectfully remind the court, Your Honor, that this next witness has no bearing at all in this case, not to mention that it is highly irregular and threadbare at best. Your Honor, I admit it is somewhat irregular, but there was a pretrial agreement. It's been very hard to get a hold of this witness, and I would ask that the court continue and keep its original agreement as to the pretrial agreement. Would the attorneys please approach the bench? Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I have allowed the pretrial decision to stand. The defense may call its last witness. Thank you, Your Honor. At this time, the defense would like to call death to the witness stand. Would you repeat that, please? I would like to call death to the witness stand.
Isn't it true that God desires us to have life and have it more abundantly? Your Honor, would you please instruct the witness to answer? Not me, you tell me. <laughs> I'll ask you again. Is it true that you and sin are separated from God? But things have changed, haven't they? The truth is that Jesus Christ overcame the power of sin and death, didn't he? How did he do that? May I refresh your memory. Jesus was handed over to you. Something he freely accepted. You wanted Jesus, and you thought you had him dead to right. And when they nailed Jesus to the cross, you crept in for the kill, didn't you? Did you rejoice when Jesus said, and I quote, it is finished, and then breathed his flowers? Then, when Judas saw that he had done what he had done, he was sick with grief, and he said, and I quote, I have betrayed innocent blood, but you weren't finished yet, then, were you? You took the life of Judas Iscariot also. Isn't it true that you want each and every one of us? And you took Christ, and you held him for three days. But you couldn't hold him, could you? Instead, God raised Jesus from the dead. You lost your grip. And now you don't even have a grip on folks, do you? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into death? Do you not know that we were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death? So that as Jesus was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in the newness of life. Are you not the last enemy to be destroyed? Death, you are swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? Nothing further, Your Honor. The defense rests. Your witness is justice. I have no questions for this questionable witness, Your Honor. Very well, the witness may step down. The testimony is now completed. Ms. Justice, you may present your closing arguments to the jury. Thank you, Your Honor. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, few moments you will be handed a ballot and the time will come for you each to make a decision. Should Judas receive punishment, eternal punishment for his action? The prosecution believes he should. According to the law and the testimony that we have heard and according to eyewitnesses, the Bible, Judas was guilty of an Crime, an eternal crime. Consider this. There is no evidence, no evidence that Judas had any faith in Jesus as our Savior. The defense would have you naively believe, the defense, Mr. Grace, would have you naively swallow this absurd notion that Judas believed that Jesus was the Messiah. And that Judas betrayed him to force Jesus to act. But the testimony has refuted that ludicrous, ludicrous idea in two ways. Here's one. First, Judas waited to hand over Jesus until the middle of the night in a garden. In a quiet, prayerful garden. Where he knew there would be no crowd. And second... After the guards seized Jesus, Judas warned the soldiers to take him under guard. Why did he do this? This is proof beyond any doubt that Judas did not believe Jesus would save the world. He betrayed the Son of God for only one reason, and that was greed. Greed. And nowhere does it say that Jesus, that Judas sought forgiveness. Nowhere. We do not believe in universal salvation. It's true that God loves everyone, but not everyone is saved. Some people simply do not.
not believe. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, God's law is very clear. God's judgment must prevail, or else everything goes, and grace becomes cheap. You must return a verdict of eternal punishment. Brothers and sisters of the jury, I think we all know that Judas was not perfect. He was, however, deeply sorry for what he had done. His exact words were, and I read, I have betrayed innocent blood. In this trial, it was the prosecution, not the defense, that had the burden of proof. The prosecution has failed to prove its case. The law that Miss Justice so proudly states says that the only unforgivable sin is, I read, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Indeed, Judas made a terrible mistake. One of the woefully ways. But nowhere did he slander the Holy Spirit. Yes, Jesus called Judas, Judas a devil. Judas indeed did betray Jesus. Jesus also called Peter Satan. Indeed, Peter denied Jesus three times. Throughout this trial, we cannot avoid taking a closer examination of ourselves and where we would also fall short of the glory of God. I don't think any one of the jury pool here would like to trade places with Jesus as far as being on trial last year. When it comes to our own lives, we do not really want justice with God. What we really want is mercy. And mercy is exactly, I say, what we perceive. The prosecution tried, but they could not touch God's love. When we look at the cross, we must ask ourselves, is there a journey so far? Is there a stain so deep? Is there a sin, a valley of sin so wide that would separate us from the love of God? I say there is not. Let us thank God that grace is stronger than all of our sins. Let us thank God that the Lord destroyed the sting of death. And let us thank God for the words that Jesus spoke from the cross. Forgive them not, for they know what they do. Are these words for Jews? I don't think they're for Jews. Let us all ask ourselves, are these words for each and every one of us? Thank you. Very well. Bailiff, are the ballots prepared? Yes, the deputies have the ballots prepared. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you have been duly sworn. You have heard that testimony. Now you are to decide the punishment, if any, for the defendant of Judas Iscariot. God's law that pertains to this case is based on the words of Jesus in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 3, verses 28 and 29, and I quote, Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter, but Whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. The ballot before you has three choices. Mark pleads only one. A line or two is provided if you choose to comment on your verdict. After you make your decision, please fold it once, drop it uh, in the plate after the service. One final note, this court does not presume to hold our decision above God's decision. Instead, you are to consider prayerfully the justice of God's law, exposing our sin, and the extent of God's grace for faith in Christ Jesus, specifically in the case of Judas and Scarlet. Does anyone not have a doubt? Please raise your hand. Very well. 